Hi, this is Kitchen Table Reviews and my name's James. Um, I've got something that's come out of the Early Access Store. It's now on the main Ubiquity website, um, so I can talk about it. It's the Unify Networks, um, or the new Unify Aggregate Switch. Um, the aggregation switch is a 8-port SFP 10 gig switch. Now, this is predominantly designed for taking in the new Pro switches. Um, so the Pro switches have got the 10 gig SFP ports, and this would then be your sort of main backbone that would then go into something like the Dream Machine Pro, which also has the 10 gigabit SFP port. Um, I don't have the Dream Machine in my network at the moment. I'm using PFSense, um, but I do have a Synology NAS and I have a MacBook Pro. Um, and I'd quite like to be able to use 10 gigabit networking to video, edit video off the NAS. But I also have a couple of XCP NG hosts um, that are in a pool. So being able to move virtual machines and use my Synology NAS as a iSCSI data target um, for the pool would be really useful. So that's what this setup is. I'm trying to do it on a bit of a budget. So one of the really good things about the Unify aggregation switch is you can pick it up in the UK for about £250. It's a lot, lot cheaper than their other devices. So just checking what the current pricing is of the other two switches you could use. The Unify Switch 16XG is £543. Um, and the Unify Switch 6 XGPOE is £543. Um, interesting that they're both priced exactly the same on their European store. But I didn't want to spend that much. I don't need PoE and I don't need 16 ports. So this was what I settled for. A few other things I've got is a uh, 10 gig SFP card for my Synology NAS, which I'll do a video of installing and setting all of that up. And then to connect into my MacBook Pro, because it doesn't have 10 gig, um, I've got the CalDigit um, Connect 10G, um, which I'll do a separate video on as well. So that's the hardware that you need. Um, as I've said, I'm doing at my house. So all the network cable that I've pulled in has been CAT6A, um, which just to give you a little bit of idea about, it has the outer core, you've then got another bit of RF shielding, and then each pair has separate shielding on it as well. So there's your pair, um, don't know how well you can see that. And then again, you've got this individual shield around each cable. So it just helps give, um, the signal going through a little bit more protection from external factors and the individual other pairs in there as well. So um, I've got a couple of DAC cables, which I'll talk about in a second, but to unbox this, let's see what we've got. So it's gone along the lines of all the new Unify packaging, which is this sort of gray recycled card um, at the top. You've got a box of bits, so we've got a power cable. Um, bearing in mind, all of the Ubiquity equipment that comes from their store um, or in any of their boxing seems to have a European plug. Um, when I bought this off the European store and got it delivered to the UK, they included a separate cable in the box um, with a UK plug. Um, and then you've then just got a couple of rack ears and some quick guide instructions in there and the screws and bits and bobs um, and rack nuts that you need to rack mount this. So we'll put that to one side for now. And it's a very small little switch. So if you've got a shallow rack, this is going to be ideal for you. take this and put this on the floor. So yeah, that is the Unify switch aggregation. Um, you've got your eight SFP 10 gig ports on the front, um, sorry, SFP plus, um, and then like the rest of the new USW switches, um, you've got your little LCD display on the front. Um, passively cooled, as far as I can tell, because there's no fans on the back, there's just these little vents along the top, and. 
um, there front and back, um, and a little reset pin on the front, which, which I hope I don't have to use. So a good little switch, I'm hoping. Um, this will go into my rack that's in my attic, um, which is where my servers are as well. So to connect everything up, um, I've got in here, so all of this came from fs.com, so thanks to Lawrence um, on Lawrence Systems on his forum, sort of reached out there on what SFP plus modules would be good to go over 30 meters. Um, the ones that Ubiquiti sell and manufacture themselves have a distance limit of 30 meters on the cable, which I think will just be enough. Um, but for one of my other rooms that I'd like to use, I wanted to have, that's probably about 40 meters. So I wanted something going a little bit over. So I'm gonna test this. This is the um, 10 gig um, 80 meter transceiver module. Um, so this is, A 10 gig SFP plus transceiver. Now this will go into one of the ports on the front, which just unclips off here. Um, making sure you get this the right way round, and I never get it the right way round. I think it's that way. That plugs into there, and then I'll have a single CAT 6A um, RJ45 terminated cable that goes from the server, or for, sorry, from the rack to my uh, Thunderbolt connector that will then go into my MacBook Pro. Um, as for the DAC cables, fairly simple. So these will go into one into this end and then I'm taking two into the Synology. Um, the reason I went with the SFP module um, for the Synology is I am gonna be going through a switch, um, which is this. So when you look at the cost of buying the Synology, um, that's fairly basic inside of here, if I remember where I put my knife. Um, if you go for their RJ45 network adapter card, um, I thought originally I'd save some money and I'd go for that setup. Um, but actually when you work out the cost of buying the transceivers, um, which are to go into the switch, it doesn't actually save you very much. So I think in my case, I've just jotted down a few numbers. The two SFP ports um, with this network adapter um, and one transceiver um, to go, or if we just talk about connecting the Synology NAS to the switch first, um, the two port card with the direct attach um, DAC cables comes to where have I written it down? 225 pounds, sorry, 266 pounds and two pence. Whereas if I'd gone for the cheaper card, which is around 150 pounds um, and got the 10 gig SFP, um, you would have been looking at around 225 pounds. So the cost difference between having two ports and one 10 gig port is around 40 pounds. Um, with having two ports, I will put one of the iSCSI um, targets or the, the storage for my XCP NG pool on one dedicated port. And then the other port I'll use for accessing and video editing and will be the main LAN port for the Synology NAS. Um, I'm gonna use one of the inbuilt RJ45 ports solely for CCTV, again, on its own separate VLAN, which you can all do through the um, Unify software. So again, that'll be another video because I've set up um, surveillance station with a few external um, dome cameras that feed into um, the network. So all you've got in the box with here is just a single card. So we'll get that installed. Um, and then I said, you've got the DAC cables on the side. So all in all, um, getting both the card for my, or network adapter for my laptop, the switch, um, all of the DAC cables that are required. Um, my budget, or what I spent came in at 718 pounds. Um, and for the two servers, I've got Dell R220s off the top of my head. 
um, they, I'm going to put a single port SFP card in. Um, it's all I could find available at a reasonable price at the moment on eBay. Um, I don't know if that's because of the Christmas sort of period, but at the end I'm paying about £40 a server to connect them in via 10 gig um, into the Unify aggregation. Um, so I'll let you know how I get on. Um, it's a, a lot shallower switch than I was initially expecting. Um, which is always helpful for giving you some room in the cabinet um, and I'll do a setup video on how this all goes. Thanks for watching um, and if you've liked this video please hit the like and subscribe button it makes a massive difference to the channel um, and keep an eye out for some tutorial videos on setting this all up.